Welcome back, boys. Today I am going to be covering dopamine and how exactly it works. I'm going to explain to you what dopamine is more of because dopamine isn't exactly happiness. That's what everybody thinks of when they hear dopamine. They think of the enjoyment out of something. But it's actually slightly different. That's a little misinterpretation. So I'm going to be explaining how exact, exactly dopamine works, how you could manipulate it, what it's used for, signs you have high or low dopamine, and I'm also going to be explaining to you why dopamine is important for testosterone. And ultimately, by understanding this, you are going to have a lot higher levels of control inside of your life. So, first of all, what exactly is dopamine? So dopamine is a molecule in your body that primarily controls motivation. And most, of, most people think of dopamine, a big dopamine release, and think, well, you're going to be super happy if you have a bunch of dopamine in your system. We relate success with dopamine. And yes, success makes you happy, but just because we have dopamine released at the same time as happiness doesn't mean every time we have dopamine released, we are happy. What dopamine is more so a response of, or the feeling that you get more of from dopamine, is pain. And why is this? Because our body hates to have a lower level of dopamine. If our dopamine drops, then we are going to feel pain. And naturally, out of human instinct, we are going to try to bring that back to baseline. And hopefully, inside of our heads, we are hoping to bring it above baseline. So by understanding how exactly our dopamine drops and how we can manipulate this, you're going to be able to control your actions and what direction you go in much more effectively. So that brings us into how exactly is dopamine going to influence you? Now it's going to influence you by increasing your motivation. Like I said a second ago, it's going to help with your pursuit. It's going to make you actually follow through with things and not experience pain or a trough or a brain deficit whenever you are doing these hard tasks. See, most people think they can't do hard tasks because they have a bunch of issues in their schedule. Oh, I'm just lazy. I'm just whatever. And it's truthfully because how they have their life set up. They don't understand how to optimize their brain to actually complete something effectively. Now, your brain actually optimizes your neural pathways when you're doing a specific task. That's why multitasking isn't real. You can't actually multitask to an effective level because what you're doing is just switching between pathways. And to do a task effectively, you want to just have certain pathways on the pathways that relate to that task and turn off the pathways that do not relate to that task. That is called focusing or the idea of a flow state comes from that, but that's not what this video is on. I wasn't even planning on saying this, but I mean, that would be a great video idea to explain to you guys how exactly to reach a flow state and what exactly it is. So I may, I may end up dropping a video on that. I'm not too sure yet. I'll have to think about it because it's really on the spot. I'd have to think on if I could actually make a meaningful education video on that. So I just said it controls motivation and pursuit, but it also controls two things that are slightly different. One of those two things is goal setting. You're going to be a lot more willing to set goals and a lot more driven with setting your goals if you actually have the drive to do that and actually complete those goals. If your dopamine levels are low or in an inconsistent state or in a state where it crashes every single time you are doing these activities, then naturally you're not going to be an individual who's setting much goals. Goal setting could actually be quite helpful if used in the proper way, but overall dopamine helps you set more goals and helps you follow through on those goals. And then the negative of having low dopamine is you procrastinate a lot. If you're procrastinating a lot, a big cause of this is likely dopamine. If you're procrastinating, that's because you are on a dopamine peak or at your baseline where you're doing something 
where whatever you are going to do next, whatever you are procrastinating is going to bring you below your baseline or below the point you are at. You are at too high of an activation state right now. So your activation state is going to lower, your brain's going to work less effectively, and you are not going to have any motivation. That is why you are procrastinating. This is your brain telling you that maybe it isn't a good idea to do this even if logic says so. So simply, how do you convince your brain to want to do this? That is what the rest of this video is going to be on. So now, I am going to explain a bit about dopamine peaks and dopamine troughs. Now, first of all, you need to know that you have a baseline level of dopamine. This baseline could fluctuate based on how frequently you are plummeting or increasing your dopamine. Overall, you can achieve a higher baseline level of dopamine, and a higher baseline is going to help you be more motivated for those hard tasks. If you have a higher baseline, then you're not going to experience as much pain from that plummet compared to somebody who has lower baseline levels of dopamine. They're going to be hurting because then their dopamine is going to be super low. Now, so we know you have your baseline. The best way to increase that baseline is actually by cold showers. That's why I have recommended in so many YouTube videos to take a two minute cold shower every single morning. Now, you guys have heard that enough times. It's your choice whether you do it, but I did want to throw that out there. Now on to dopamine peaks. So your dopamine peaks right before something happens. So if I, dopamine you can see as motivation, like I said a second ago. So if I see the chocolate bar, then my then my motivation to get that chocolate bar and eat it is going to go up. When I see that chocolate bar, my dopamine is going to go up. It's going to peak up here. Now, once I actually eat the chocolate bar or give myself that reward, your dopamine is going to plummet and it is going to plummet equally below baseline as it just peaked. So now you are going to be in a dopamine trough and naturally your body wants to, wants to return up here. Now, it actually returns to your baseline over time. But the caveat is, if you don't give yourself time to return to your baseline levels of dopamine, then your dopamine is going to go back up. Let's say I now want another chocolate bar because I am in a dopamine trough. I'm going to be down here. And then my dopamine is going to be back, go back up because I want that next chocolate bar I see. And then I give myself that next chocolate bar and my dopamine is going to drop even lower. And now it's no longer going to return to baseline. So by understanding this, you could understand why you don't want to give into urges over and over and over again. This is what's going to plummet your baseline levels of dopamine. And this is why TikTok algorithms are so addictive because they do lower your baseline level of dopamine to a point where if you're not peaking it, then you are in pain. Now there is another level to this. Now, what if you have that chocolate bar in front of you? You have motivation to get that chocolate bar but you eat the broccoli or some vegetable instead. What happens when you do that is you actually drop yourself straight into the trough from up here. It has the same exact results, the same exact painful feeling. So you could compare this whole chocolate bar and food scenario to your life. If I am a gamer and I am trying to work on my business, then the game just the, the thought of it is going to make it a lot more painful to work on my business. So the whole idea behind this is, well, you swap the roles around. You, you bring yourself a more unappealing activity rather than a more appealing activity. So if you hate checking your email, then you give yourself two options. I could either check my email now or I could work on my business. You're gonna prefer working on your business. So you're actually going to get the dopamine working on your business. And your dopamine is actually going to stay high because now if you stop this, that means you have to check your emails. So now suddenly, rather than having this pain because I'd rather game than work on my business, now you are saying, 
Well, I enjoy working on my business because now I get higher levels of dopamine from working on my business and I feel good. And it's not necessarily that you feel good from the dopamine, but you are going to feel rewarded from this. This is why people snowball in life. This is why people either snowball in a negative direction or a positive direction. This is exactly why you need to become a morning person. There is nobody that cannot become a morning person. The whole idea of, oh, I could only work hard at night, it's because you are not optimizing your mornings in the proper way. In the mornings, you could see it as a reset on your brain. Your brain is no longer going to be tempted to do all these activities. You're going to have an option to present yourself with morning tasks. And if you present yourself with multiple hard morning tasks, then one of those two hard morning tasks are going to be easier than it's going to be at night. And I want you to be careful on when exactly you introduce these dopamine feeding activities into your life, if you introduce them at all. Now, this is because it takes way longer to recover from your dopamine troughs than it does to take to drop from your dopamine peaks. A peak is very temporary. It's only when you're considering something. A trough can last up to two hours from one activity. So if you have a two hour trough in dopamine, that's two hours where it's going to be harder to work on whatever you need to work on. So let me ask you guys, what is your weakness? What is the hardest thing in your life right now? If you say the hardest thing in your life right now is your business and you've been sort of slacking off on your reading for your business because you're, you're sort of dilly-dallying around your business but you're, you're keeping the idea in mind and you're just on and off, you're getting distracted, who texted me, you're not really doing much, you're just procrastinating, then go ahead and use that to read more and to actually read effectively. Because now you're going to wake up and you're going to say, as soon as I am done reading, I am working on my business. Now, suddenly reading is going to be a much more enjoyable activity. If you're reading for knowledge, then you're going to actually start to enjoy it because it's either you're reading and gaining knowledge or you're in this thing that you dislike more. Now, I don't know all of your lives. I cannot name all of your lives but you guys get the idea, or at least I hope you do. You find the hardest thing, and then you find the second hardest thing, and you use the hardest thing to grind out the second hardest thing, or make the second hardest thing easier. And then once that second hardest thing is actually done or completed, then you introduce a harder thing than the hardest thing into your life. If I, for me, say I'm working on my YouTube channel. Let's, let's just say YouTube channel is the business reading and then third we're building a building a coaching website now obviously the hardest out of those three things is going to be the coaching website it's going to go reading youtube and then coaching website so what am i gonna do i may procrastinate some on the coaching website but i'm going to use that procrastination to go ahead and make myself more effective at my youtube channel and to post higher quality videos and put more discipline into these videos. Now, I mentioned earlier the whole idea of testosterone actually going up when you are focused on dopamine. And this is because dopamine increases your luteinizing hormone. If you have a higher baseline level of dopamine, you're going to have higher luteinizing hormone. And luteinizing hormone is going to increase your testosterone. And it is also going to help increase your estrogen in ratio to hit that 20 to 1 ratio for proper brain development, proper libido, and a few other things. I hope you guys learned something useful and I hope you guys actually implement this and think how exactly I can adjust my schedule for this. But with that being said, remember, as lifelong learners, Perspicacity is our grindstone for success. Keep on grinding, boys.